Welcome to the Sri Lankan Understanding, a platform on which we understand the past, look at where the country is at present and explore the potential of the future. Our topic of conversation today is reconciliation, the path, process and potential. And to talk to us today, we have with us um, a lecturer, a policy specialist, attorney at law. She had her graduate studies at the University of Colombo and the Uppsala Institute. Her PhD is Leadership in Women Entrepreneurship. Welcome to Sri Lankan Understanding, Dr. Diani Panagoda. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us on the show this uh, today. When we talk about reconciliation and we go back to the past, this would have been highly relevant in times gone by given the diversity and variety in society at that juncture. How was it possible? I think, I think the whole society in the ancient times was built on community relations. When you say community relations, it's all about um, who is there. And uh, my understanding and my readings tells me that although we may have had various disputes, even in the ancient past, what we rose as Sri Lanka, as Sri Lankan uh, citizens is that we respect diversity, we believe in unity in diversity, and we also recognize that it is the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the society is always built on that multilingual, multicultural, uh, kind of multi-ethnic groups. So when you say that it's not only all that you build relationships, but also it's important that you see um, relationships are built on understanding and trust. So we need to build trust, we need to build understanding. And in the past, if you look at in the past, we have had many uh, situations where that we um, we question our relationships, our, our trust between certain communities and even the recent past it has happened. So why it happens is mainly because that we lack that understanding that um, diversity is beautiful and that diversity, diversity is actually what brings the best out of every community, every single individual. So in doing that um, I mean, I, I always quote uh, John Paul Diderac, who uh, says that conflict transformation happens at the three levels, that is grassroots, and that is at the medium level, and that is at the top level. So it has to be bottom-up approach with, with the communities, their understanding, and their willingness to participate in understanding and building trust among communities, and then to understand that these communities are diverse and we are not only talking about uh, ethnicities or the religions but also the ability, disability and women and children. So we are looking at inclusiveness. So I think most of the countries are looking at this inclusiveness and the more you in consider the inclusiveness the better that you understand everybody, gives opportunities to everyone to excel in their own way whilst maintaining their identities. Uh, some people say that this, these are also comes with the identity crisis. And um, so to understand the identity crisis, it's, it's the simple uh, reaction that I have to it is that let's understand each other. Let's believe in what we all are here because this life, I mean, bringing from Buddhist philosophy, I'm a Buddhist, and Buddhist philosophy, this life is short. And we are here for a purpose, and we need to achieve that purpose by respecting other, agree to disagree, and go beyond what is self-actualization um, because sometimes uh, when it comes to the rat race, we think that what we want only is the best and uh, some or the other get it. It's not that if you support, I always say if you give, you get. So it's a give and take. It's a, it's, I think these are, these are being said by many, many authors, artists. If you look at the movies that was done since 1948 in Sri Lanka, if you listen to some of the songs 
they are very inspirational and they speak about I, 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 I am saying here that they speak about the strength in unity, strength in diversity. So it's not just that we fought for independence together or something like that. It is important that we work together with the one goal that is this beautiful land, this beautiful country is ours and it is for me, for you and for everybody and those who um, uh, kind of uh, love it, they love it wholeheartedly. And uh, so I bring that uh, understanding from my religious background, understanding from my educational background and understanding from my um, the inspirational um, um, leaders or, the, or those who were before me talking about reconciliation that it is important at this juncture in this country. Uh, I must say one thing, uh, George, here is that some people get nervous when you heard the word reconciliation. That is maybe because that it came to discussion um, during and after the war, or mainly after 2009 ending the war. And most of the people attach reconciliation to various other mechanisms. But reconciliation, it's beautiful. It's what we are. It's what this country is all about. And it's what we have, we have had our uh, forefathers building this country. And I remember my father, who was a school teacher at the Jaffna uh, Singhala Vidyalaya, was telling me about how they have built relationships, how they have built trust. So it's not, it's, it's not coming, f uh, it, it's, it's sad to see that people think reconciliation has to be done by the government or reconciliation is a uh, alien word or it's coming from the Western philosophy or it's coming, it's given to us. I think I would like to say here, state here that it's not given to us. It's, it's, it's what we are built on. It's what Sri Lanka is about. It's what the, this nation is about. The, we have gone through many uh, uh, calamities and still we are together. So for me, it's relationship building. More than that, it's trust building and understanding. Thank you. When we, when we come back to the Sri Lankan understanding in the next segment, we're going to look at the process, how we actually go about implementing it. It's exactly what is happening from the theoretical side onto the practical side. That's what we want to talk about next when we return with the Sri Lankan understanding. Welcome back to the Sri Lankan Understanding. Our topic of discussion is reconciliation, the path, process and potential. And we are in conversation with Dr. Dayani Panagoda. Before the break, uh, Dr. Panagoda, you talked about the past, how we have been able to, or at least tried to, and we've had the groundwork set out for us, how we tried to achieve reconciliation. For many in Sri Lanka, including yourself, you've gone through very trying times in life. How do you at that point deal with that situation, move on, and today you even advocate reconciliation. How do you do that? So it's simple. It's that uh, you can forgive, but you cannot forget. So I started forgiving uh, for what? I mean, I lost my husband to the war, and um, he, was, uh, he was in the Navy, so he went out there, and he fought for the country, and then we lost him. Not only me, the whole country lost him. So, uh, I, what I thought is, okay, let's forgive, but I will never forget. Why I don't forget? It's not that I don't forget because I want to take revenge or I want to see something uh, bad happening to those people. Because if you don't forget that, you will make sure that you work for non-recurrence. That's my philosophy. That's the way that I thought. Uh, to be honest with you, in fact, I was uh, I was lecturing at uh, one of the leading institutes um, 
uh, law and then I changed my uh, career path to becoming an advocate to um, peace building, reconciliation and worked with the uh, peace uh, secretariat, um, working with the government to ensure that we work also on peace building whilst we are fighting the, um, the war against the deadly terrorists. So like me, there are many thousands of war widows who really are, uh, are working within the communities and with their families to understand the role that we can play. So we have a stake in the table in the whole process of reconciliation. So we need to consult these people, we need to understand what they are going through, we need to understand what the disabled persons are going through and it's, I know it's a political will that matters a lot in bringing the country together to move forward on the reconciliation path. But, um, but at the same time, every individual has a responsibility. So when I say that um, people like us, um, we work with the government, we work with the other institutions, organizations and individuals um, because we need to work on mental health and psychosocial. These are some of the areas that we need to improve. I think I have said this before, before that mental health and psychosocial for the people who went through this trauma is very important. The second one is economic resilience, not only for these um, war affected people, now that we, have, we are grappling with another issue with COVID, uh, we need to uh, work on re economic re uh, uh, re resilience. And then we also have to work with the, with, the, with the individuals and their personalities and intergenerational dialogue needs a, needs a better understanding because most of these younger generation will not understand what the country has gone through and they will not um, value so some of the sacrifices made by some people. So it's important that we, we all work together and I know most of the, I don't want to um, uh, bring, bring names here, but I know most of the people are very much focused on these areas and to work uh, not only with the individuals like me, but also with communities to bring that um, understanding and bring that, uh, build that trust because uh, uh, non-recurrence is the key. That's my, my uh, entering into this field is to another woman like me should not be suffering because of uh, terrorist activities or violent activities that are happening in this country. So I think most of the others are also having that in mind in terms of talking of reconciliation and when you say reconciliation, um, we always think that oh it's, it's all about, uh, it's all about finding faults, it's not. It's all about how do we move forward. I am thinking of way forward, I'm thinking of how do we work with government, especially the government, if I am permitted to say so. I, I, I am very happy to see that the Office of National Unity and Reconciliation is revamped and they are going into the grassroots discussing the points of uh, reconciliation and how to break the, the misunderstandings. I fully support that uh, effort. And they are also working with the Office of Missing Person, Office of Reparation to work with uh, some of the misfortunate um, individuals who lost their loved ones and lost their property. So these are the good, um, these are the great efforts that we have made and uh, uh, I think, I think we all as stakeholders, the victims, um, the, the policy makers, the civil society, the academia, we all need to support each other in terms of uh, achieving reconciliation in Sri Lanka. So when you say reconciliation in Sri Lanka, it's broad, it's, it's kind of, uh, uh, I, my focus is 
that we should see our country grow and our children grow without any fear, without any hate towards other communities. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, there are so many stakeholders involved. There are people who have been directly affected, but there are lots of others who can do a lot more to assist those people, whether it's the state, whether it's society and various sectors of society. We all have a role to play at the end of the day. When we return with the Sri Lankan understanding, we're going to look at the path forward. We're going to look at the potential of reconciliation and the benefit of actually having a reconciled Sri Lanka in the years ahead. When we return with the Sri Lankan understanding. Welcome back to the Sri Lankan Understanding. We are in conversation with Dr. Diane Panagoda and talking about reconciliation, the path, process and the potential. Before the breaks, we mentioned various aspects of the theoretical side of reconciliation. What people are going through in terms of being stakeholders, whether it's the victims, whether it's the state, whether it's other sectors of society that are involved in the process of reconciliation. As we go into the future, Dr. Panagoda, how do you see reconciliation evolving in this country? What do we need to still do to realize the full potential of the island nation? Yeah, the, the, as we are an island nation, it's important that we manage our business. And to do that, I think first thing I, I would like to see more of uh, political will and the commitment. And uh, I'm very happy the way that we are moving now because uh, uh, some of the policies of this current administration is moving forward in promoting reconciliation and that ha having said that we need to work with them. They also need to, the government uh, need to work with all stakeholders, uh, getting the civil society, getting the academia, getting youth especially uh, and uh, children and the women involved in the process of reconciliation. Uh, you know, by way of using various tools such as art, drama, music and uh, memorializations and also in terms of bringing, the, um, bringing, bringing to the table the experiences. Storytelling has a powerful, it's a powerful tool to allow people to think. Secondly, I think it is also important as I said before, economic resilience because I see, I have been meeting people from all over the country that we need to work on reconciliation because that's we, reconciliation through economic resilience because that's where some of the people feel that they are being marginalized and neglected and I, as you, are, you and I know some of, the, some of the causes for conflict is poverty or is the marginalization so we need to minimize those. Um, we need to work forward toward that. Uh, but I strongly advocate inclusive education. When I say inclusive education, it's not only that we learn the languages. Language has a pa major role to play in our reconciliation process. I know the government has made all the efforts to, uh, since from the past, come to the present, struggling to implement the national languages policy. For my understanding is why we are not doing well is the attitudinal changes because you need to have a bigger heart to serve the person who is coming to seek your services in the language of his choice. And this is something that we need to change attitudes of the, I'm not saying that all have this uh, attitude, a high and mighty attitude of not my language is your language because I'm the majority. But I think that is something that we need to work on and education, uh, coming back to education along with language is that um, inclusive education, when you say inclusive education, it's all about how we equally distribute resources and you know that there are popular schools and there are schools that are, all, uh, that are being more sought after and we need to see the potentials of these schools from there where they are to support the other schools and then children have various ways and means to learn and the COVID taught us. COVID taught us as to learning is not only that you go to your physical space and to study. So this is, these are the opportunities we have in terms of uh, uh, promoting reconciliation, especially through education, values-based education needs to be 
so, uh, social cohesion for education needs to be incorporated and also to comparative religions and what I see most is not knowing the history of the country. I think that's something that we really have to work. Then finally, I think um, what I am amazed and what I am always getting um, very emotional is this intergenerational uh, discourse or the dialogue because it's very important to understand why certain generations have been living in harmony and then how it breaks at one point and now we are tr struggling so it's this three generational generations needs to work together and to understand and there are many tools for you to do that and these are these can be through various uh, writings read to reconcile you can read books about you can have uh, you can have art and drama to discuss about these things so it's important that as a as a nation we have a uh, plan, we have a roadmap, we have a path that we, it is given and my, my strong, advoc I strongly advocate that Sri Lanka is a multi-religious, multi-ethnic uh, country. So given that situation, it is important for us to work with everybody. And how do you work with everybody is to understand uh, them. And look, cricket has brought us together. So similarly, we can find many um, tools to bring us together, work together and make it happen. And for that, um, the government uh, play a leading role because that's where the people believe in that. We have a political will. And when I say political will, it's not necessarily only the government again, entire uh, system, legislative system has to work with the other stakeholders and bring what is necessary, what is important to demystify the understanding about reconciliation or, or causes of conflict and then move forward. I think uh, my, my uh, in, in, in a nutshell, it's that, that um, forgive, but don't forget the fact that we are built on what hap has happened to us. We were colonized, then we had uh, uh, natural calamities, and then we had these uh, horrendous violent experiences. So let's let's move forward and then work towards that. Absolutely, and those are such important factors for us to build an understanding history, understanding the past, so that we don't repeat it in whatever form or manifestation it does decide to unravel itself once again. And you also brought up this very critical factor of labeling Sri Lanka. This is a multi-ethnic, multi-religious country. It's very diverse. If we want to find differences, we can find so many. But we have one common denominator, and that is being Sri Lankan. And you see, and that is where we probably need to understand that reconciliation is not something that we do simply because of a resolution in some part of the world or some kind of pressure being brought to bear from the outside. It's good for us. It's going to help Absolutely. us. It's Absolutely. going to take us forward. Absolutely. This is where we need to understand Absolutely. the potential. That is why I even didn't mention to these resolutions because this is us. Absolutely. This is we together. This and is a very Sri Lankan thing. It's Sri Lankan. It's, it's our love for this country, this nation, and I enjoyed my childhood. I want others to do the same. And I enjoyed my uh, studies despite the fact that we were going through uh, various difficulties of in the country. So I want everybody else to enjoy that. Exactly. And this is something that we've grown up with in this country. And this is something that future generations must also be able to enjoy, experience, and take into the future. We were talking about reconciliation, the path, process, and the potential. Thank you very much, Dr. Panagoda, for your time uh, on the show with us today. Join us again next time when we look at the path this country has taken, where we are at present, and the potential as we go into the future. Thank you for joining us on the Sri Lankan Understanding.